Okay, how many questions do we have? Oh my goodness, one, two, three. That, that's three fifths of the thing. And a lot of these problems are repeats. Did you guys even notice that? I think there was only like one problem on there that was like different from the homework. Yeah, but Mr. Parker, I haven't even done the homework yet. Okay, number one. Are you choking me? Sometimes you take a test, you might see this. Are you joking me? <laughs> so we need to complete the square. So 3x squared plus 10x, leave the space. And then the y's, you can factor out a 4, so you get y squared plus 6y, leave the space, equals negative 63. So you got to complete the square, so you add 25, but you actually added 75. And then you got to add 9, but you actually added 36, correct? So 3, x plus 5 squared plus 4 times y plus 3 squared equals 48. So make this side 1, subtracting 47 from both sides. You get x plus 5 squared over 16 plus y plus 3 squared over 12. So this is, so a, a is 4, b is 2 root 3. And c squared equals a squared minus b squared, so c is 2. Did you get those numbers? Now, do I even have to draw this ellipse? No! It says find the area of the rectangle to a drug of our projector. Boom! So if you have an ellipse like this, here are the full side, here is one lattice rectum, here's the other. What, what are we trying to find? Oh, the endpoints. Oh! Find the area of that rectangle right there. Well, if this is the center, well, what's the length of the rectangle? Isn't that 2C? Because center to the focus is C, right? So that's C and that's C, that's 2C. And what's the length of the lattice rectum? Isn't it 2B squared over A? <coughs> so just take these numbers and plug it in here. And you're done. Why, did you actually compute the endpoints of the lattice rectum right there? No, because I didn't do it yet. Okay, number two. <laughs> you guys don't remember doing this yesterday? The two asymptotes? The probability that this is on tomorrow's test is quite high. 0.6. That's not that high, Mr. Park. I'll give you high. 15x. Uh, <laughs> now, if you know, I did the exact same thing with different numbers yesterday. See, that's the trouble. You guys don't even know what we did in class because you didn't even do your homework. Okay, here are the two asymptotes. How do I find where the center is? Subtract. You find where they intersect. So sub why subtract when you can add? Strike one. 30x is equal to negative 210x equal negative 7. Did I do that correctly? Yes. Okay, plug that in here. So that's that negative 105. So you add 100. Five, so that's 32, y equal 4. So we know the center is at negative 7, 4, correct? Okay, so if you do that tomorrow, I'm going to give you 2 out of 10 points right there. But you got to label it as the center, though. And the focus is at 27. It's the same orientation. You don't remember me drawing this picture? The focus is over there. Now, the distance from the center to the focus is C. So what is C? C is 34. Okay, so if you at least tell me that you know what, uh, the meaning of C, you can get some points there. Okay, now what? C squared is equal to A squared plus B squared, right? But, but we, we just figured out C is 34. So let's just put 34 squared here. See, at least if you're showing me using that equation, then you're going to get some more points. But in order to write the code, oh, look, we got the setup, okay? We know this is a hyperbole, a left-right hyperbole, so you can do this. x plus 7 squared over a squared minus y minus 4 squared over b squared equals 1. Here. So all you have to do is figure out a and b, and the problem is done. Now, how do I figure out a and b? All I have is this. So I can make up just any two numbers that add up to 34 squared. 
No. What did we do yesterday? The slope of the asymptotes. If this is a left-right hyperbola, the slope of the asymptotes will be B over A. And what are the slope of these two asymptotes? Plus or minus 15 over 8. So that means B over A is 15 over 8. So tomorrow, what if I give you an up and down hyperbola? Then this is going to be A over B. Is that going to throw you off? No, this throws me off just fine. So now you got two equations and variables. You got this equation, you got this equation, solve them. And once you get A, put A squared there. Once you get B, you put B squared there. But for those of you who are smart, what? What are you sniffing up? Yeah. And which one? 8, 15, 17. Yeah, but Mr. Park, that's 34. <laughs> no, that means you double it. Look, 8, 15, 17. But then C is 34, Mr. Park. So yeah, so double it. 16, 30, 34. You know what I'm talking about? Okay, if you don't know what I'm talking about, just solve these two equations. Except, I know already. I know what you guys are made of. Some of you are going to screw up on 34 squared right there. I know, you guys can't do it. Because you gotta, you got to carry over and then all hell is going to break loose. Okay, I'm not going to do You guys got to finish this. I, I did all the hard work for you. Okay, number three. Okay, this is the only problem on this worksheet that we haven't seen before, right here. I think we'll see something like this tomorrow. The eccentricity of a hyperbola is one more than the eccentricity of an ellipse. So, we have two things. We've got a hyperbola and we have an ellipse. The hyperbola is sh share the same foci. What does that mean? <laughs> okay, think about no, too late. Think about that for a moment. The equation of the hyperbola is x squared over 36 minus y squared over 64 equals 1. So this is a left-right hyperbola, and they share the same foci. So here, let me draw a picture. So the center is at the origin. Okay, it kind of looks like this. Woo! Woo! They share the same foci. Here's the ellipse. It's going to look like that. So should the center of the ellipse also be at the origin? Yes. So the equation of the ellipse is going to be x squared over a squared plus y squared over b squared equals 1. All you got to do is figure out a and b. So what should I do? Should I actually figure out the full sign? What then? Yeah, you got to. In a hyperbola, c squared is equal to a squared plus b squared, which is 100. That means c is 10. It means from here to here is 10. But if the ellipse shares the, share the same foci, so shouldn't C equal 10 for the ellipse as well? Does they share the same foci? <laughs> okay, what, what else? What else? Well, it says the eccentricity of the hyperbola is one more than the eccentricity of the ellipse. So I think we should find the eccentricity. Well, C, this is A squared, so what is A? A is 6. So what is C over A for the, for the hyperbola? 10 over 6, which can be reduced to 5 thirds. So if the eccentricity of the hyperbola is one more than the ellipse, what was the eccentricity of the ellipse? This is one more than what number? 2 thirds. So does that mean C is 2 and A is 3? Don't be ridiculous. But then, are you sniffing up Pythagorean triples again? Oh, we already got C? Oh, we already got C! So C is 10. That makes A, multiplication factor 5, 15. Oh, so this is 225. And once you know A and C, in an ellipse, C squared equals A squared minus B squared. So what is that? 100 is equal to 225 minus B squared. Therefore, B squared is 125. And there's your answer. Okay, I already know tomorrow already. I can feel it already. There's going to be some 30-somethings. Just brace yourself for impact. How did you know the origin was at zero again? Because, look, zero, zero. Oh. Because if the center of the hyperbola 
is that the origin, and they share the same foci, then the center of the ellipse is going to be the origin as well, right? Okay. Number four. And I'm out of tissues now, so if you're going to cry tomorrow while you're taking the test, you've got to bring your own. Write the equation to conic. Oh, here's something new. Center at the origin. The lateral recta is perpendicular to the x-axis, so this means it's a left-right conic section. Eccentricity is one half, which is between zero and one, so this is an ellipse. So this is a left-right ellipse, where the center is at the origin. And it passes through the point two, three. Okay, what's the equation of this ellipse? x squared over a squared plus y squared over b squared equals 1, right? Because it's the left-right ellipse. The center is at the origin. If we can figure out a and b, the problem is done. Well, it passes through the point 2, comma 3. What do you think I'm going to do with that point? What do we always do with the point if it passes through? You plug it in. If I plug in 2 for x and 3 for y, you get 4 over a squared plus 9 over b squared equals 1. Can I solve for a and b from that? No, you need another equation, right? Because there's two variables. Well, it says the eccentricity is one half. So that means C over A is one half. But then now you introduce the third variable, so now you need three equations. But that's easy because what's, what equation always works in any lips? C squared equals A squared minus B squared. There you go. Three equations, three variables, you solve it. Or do you need me to do it? Okay, I'll do it. You guys. Okay, first step is to eliminate one variable. Which variable do you want to eliminate? A. Really? A to C. I want to eliminate C. So in this equation, C equals 1 half A. Take that and plug it in here. So you get A squared over 4 is equal to A squared minus B squared. Which says what? Simplify that. B squared equals three fourths a squared, right? One minus one fourth is three fourths. Oh, then take this b squared and plug it in there. So four over a squared plus nine over b squared, but b squared is three fourths a squared is equal to one, and then now you just have an equation with one variable. You guys can take it from there, right? Or are you going to fumble it? Fumble it nearly with gold line. Oh, never mind, never mind, never mind, never mind. You guys got it? Or you guys can take it from there? Okay, look. Okay, when you divide by a fraction, that's like multiplying by the reciprocal. So if you multiply 9 times 4 thirds, what is that? What is 9 times 4 thirds? Are you joking me? 12 over a squared equal 1. And 4 gorilla plus 12 gorilla is 16 gorilla. So a squared equals 16. Woohoo! Look at this. a squared is 16. And once you get a squared, plug it in right there. What is b squared then? 12. Finish. That's your answer. Come on, it's just solving this algebra 1. The hard part is you've got to set up the equations. Okay, now tomorrow, in light of the pain that you're going to endure. I'm going to give you some formulas at the top of the page. Well, I'm not going to tell you what they are, I'm just going to tell them to you. It's going to be like, I'm going to C over A, 2B squared over A, A squared over C. I'll put those formulas at the top. Because every single year, students always do C squared over A, and I hate seeing that. Because if you write C squared over A, that, that's probably an eight point error right there. <laughs> So I'm going to write a squared over c. And since I write a squared over c, if you put c squared over a, I would think it's a fatal error, minus 10. But you bet, yeah. And tomorrow, you know when you're doing ellipses and hyperbolas, if anybody comes out to like, well, a equal negative 5, that means you made a mistake. a, b, and c cannot come out negative now. OK? So you know what students usually do is, that, ooh, <laughs> we'll take a triple if I see that tomorrow. 
Number, oh, very good. Okay, now tomorrow. You know the three points? Like I'm going to give you three non-collinear points. And you either you're going to have to write the equation of the circle, a vertical parabola, or a horizontal parabola. That problem is on. That's one of the seven problems. So you just have to know which equation to plug it into. You guys know which one? Okay, let's review that. If it's a circle, then you plug it into this equation. What if it's a vertical, up, a vertical parabola? Then you plug it into that equation. And if it's a horizontal parabola, you plug it into that equation. So this is one of the seven problems. But it's up to you to do the algebra. Okay, number six. Write the equation of the hyperbolas. What does that mean, hyperbolas? It means there's more than one answer. So if you only give me one, you're only going to get half credit if it's correct. The asymptotes are y equal 1 half plus or minus 1 half x. So this is y equal negative half x. This is y equal 1 half x. Now can you see why there's going to be two answers? Because you can have a left-right hyperbola, but you can also have an up and down hyperbola. So you've got to give both. Because the only th other thing it says, the length of the lattice rectum is equal to 16. So what do I write down? 2b squared. squared over a equals 16. Take your one point and run. OK, now, which one you want to do first, the left-right one or the up and down one? No, I, you know what? I'm only going to do one of them. You're going to do the other. Which one you want me to do? OK, left-right hyperbola. Ooh, the slopes are 1 plus or minus 1 half. So what? B over A equals 1 half. If it was the up and down hyperbola, then you would go A over B equals 1 half. But look, two equations, two variables, just solve. Come on. And does everybody, can everybody see the, the center is at Oregon? Because this line and this line, there's no plus B in this way, right? OK, do I really need to solve this? I'm just curious, what, what would you do to solve this? Would you solve for B in this equation and plug it in there? Or solve for A and plug it in there? No, no, look, no, look, 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 look. Look, isn't 2B squared over A, isn't that the same thing as 2B times B over A? Huh? <laughs> but then B over A is 1 half, so this is 1 half, therefore B is 16. OK, whatever. Just solve for B. Plug I, don't care, I don't care what you do. Just solve it. And then, of course, if B is 16, what does that make A? 32. So what's the equation of this hyperbola? Then? It's going to be x squared over a squared, which is 1,024, remember? Minus y squared over 16 squared, which is 256, equals 1. So this is the one that opens left and right. So the one that opens up and down, so like I told you, the only difference is now it's A over B is 1 half. I said so many, so many of you are so behind. Maybe the crying don't start tonight. Don't even wait till tomorrow. Number 10. Wait a minute, then look, number 7. You guys know that problem right there. OK, number 10. This is the one! No, no, I know how to do it. I know how to do it. And then now you cannot do it. Find the focus of the parabola with a vertical axis. So this is an up and down parabola. Which equation am I going to plug into? The x squared one. See, you guys, you guys just nod your head. Yeah? OK, so take these three points and plug it in here. So you're going to get 0x plus 10y plus f equals 0. Oh, that's too easy. Why you put y? Is it e? Yeah, it is e. I told you in the afternoon the glare comes in. d plus 5e plus f equals negative 1. And then 2d plus 2e plus f equals negative 4. Did I do that correctly? Yes. Yes. So how do you guys want to solve these equations? 
minus just subtract. subtract. Yeah, but this one already doesn't have a B. The the second, the first, the second, the so you got to eliminate B from these two. So multiply this equation by two and subtract it from this one. Yeah. I don't look, okay. I don't care what you do tomorrow because I'm just gonna look at the result. So if you don't have the result, then it's like minus five or something. Okay, multiply this equation by two. Two b plus ten e plus two f equals negative two. Subtract negative eight e minus f equal <coughs> negative two. Put that together with the first equation, ten e plus f equals zero. Add 2e equals negative 2. Ooh, e equals negative 1. Once you get that, plug it in here. F equals 10. Once you get these two, plug it into one of these. This one got the smallest number yet, so negative 1 and 10. So d is? Negative 6. Correct. Okay, so therefore the equation of the parabola is x squared minus 6x minus y plus 10 equals 0. Bob said that's the answer. No. No, no it says find the focus. Let's find the focus. So that means I have to put this into standard form. I've got to complete the square, baby. So x squared minus 6x, leave a space, is equal to y minus 10. What do I have to add? 9. Make sure you add 9 to both sides. So x minus 3 squared is equal to y minus 1. Is that standard form? Yes, because the 4p is the 1 right there, right? So we know 4p is equal to 1, which means p is 1 4. And which way does this parabola open? It opens up, and the vertex is at 3 comma 1. So to get to the focus, you have to go 1 fourth up, so where would that be? 3 comma 5 fourths. Yeah, I think, yeah. So, yes, one of the problems, I give you three points, you got to write the equation. You might even have to find something. Okay, so is that it? Okay. Oh, we had a calculus test today. I just want to tell you. I correct the homework. I don't know if senioritis is setting in. Uh, there was like six of them get zeros. So they're going to pass it back tomorrow with, with their current average. So many of them are under 50%. It's ridiculous. <laughs> but that's not going to happen to you guys. You guys have junioritis. Yeah. Okay, the bell rings at 10 minutes.